Time for the 49ers Rush Podcast. And here's your host, John Chapman. What is going on, Faithful? It's absolutely incredible to be with you guys today. I apologize for the absence. I was out of town, went with some really good friends uh, down to Miami and had some good R&R. It was awesome. And tequila at good times and sunshine. It was awesome. But I got back late Monday night, and I have just been clipping through this draft guide. Uh, it, was, it was funny. Like, I... There's a point that this happens every single year where I'm like, all right, I don't know. Spent about 12 to 14 hours yesterday just grinding through, trying to finish up as many write-ups as I can. And I was like, you know what? I'm tired. Let's go to bed early. Went to bed at like 8 o'clock, only to wake up at like 11 o'clock just because I was like, oh, no. <clears throat> I was like too jazzed. So I had to wake up and stayed up till about 2 something. You know, from 11 to 2, just grinding more tape, working on nickels, uh, fifth round nickels of all things, which which is a lot of fun. So I love this time of year. And I'm, the goal is to get my draft guide, my war room right up, you know, the big board, all that stuff. Uh, the goal's 250. And it's a lofty goal. We'll see how far we get into that. That's probably going to be released Saturday. Um, so that's going to be coming out. Now, today's episode, which I'm really excited about because we already did the first half of this. And if you want to go back on our YouTube channel or Spotify feed or wherever you listen to this or watch this, top five offensive groupings. Uh, this Today's going to be top five defensive groupings where we go through, like, who are my top five DTs? Who are my top five edges? Who are my top five off-the-ball linebackers, corners, safeties? It just kind of progress through some of those. Um you know, because like, you know, we'll start with edges. I don't think the Niners really have a shot at the top three, but you talk about those next like five or six. All right. And that's right in the 49ers wheelhouse where some fits are, where some fits might not be. Uh, you know, a couple names that you keep hearing mentioned, perhaps by other, you know, podcasters or whatever on social media. Eh, I don't know. Uh, I'm higher and lower on some guys. These are all just my opinions, which is take it or leave it. You know, it's it's former coaching background. Been doing this for a little while, but doesn't mean I'm good at it or great at it or anything like that. I do think we put out some quality content, but um, I think that it brings a lot because everything that we look at it is with the Niners slant, not saying other people don't do that, but to go through each one of these, you know, 250 prospects and dive into their background, their academic history, their team captain history, what they did in high school, um, all with the Niners slant on it. I don't know. I think we can kind of see the tea leaves on some of these players and hopefully we can get into some of those comments. Appreciate you guys. Look at David. Yes, Chapman's back. Hashtag CC. What's up, Nick? Vader Niner, let's go. What's up, bro? Montana, Tobias, Kevin, Mike. Ah, we got all the studs out here, including Paul Hope. What's up, buddy? Uh, really enjoyed your bit. Um, I forget the name of the show, but it was awesome. I, I've watched like every one of your clips, Paul. Great job. Dave, my man. Um, this is perfect. He said, and Paul had just said, you know, we just finished across the pond. And Paul, it's time, buddy. We got to get something on schedule, so uh, uh, reach out to me, man. We'll get together. We'll talk. Hey, Aaron, appreciate it. Kib, this is awesome. Um, <laughs> Aaron says, the boss asked if I'm available, told him I have a meeting. That is right. That is what we are doing here. We are meeting with some great people, and we're talking about some great prospects. I really, really like this draft class. There's several times where perhaps 49ers' needs don't match with the strength of a draft class, or perhaps where the 49ers are picking or not picking doesn't match with the draft class. I don't feel that way at all uh, about this is perfect pairing. You're talking about what are the 49ers needs. Okay. I think center. Oh man, there's going to be three center options available in round one. There's a couple center round, you know, center projections in round three offensive tackle. Good Lord. Maybe the best offensive tackle class to come out in a decade. Niners might have an opportunity there. You talk about nickel corner. Whew. It might be the best nickel corner draft in the history of the NFL with the evolution of how 
you know, college is all doing four wide, five wide, everything now. So you're getting a lot more of these slot type nickels. So that fits. I mean, I mean, it's just, it matches, it matches. Now, how much of that is just me projecting what I want to see? I, I don't know. Uh, bias exists. I, I, I wish I could remove myself from it, but I know that I can't. Um, but we'll process through some of that. Um, <laughs> look at Alex, Seattle Niners faithful. He says, the content you put out is good. That's an inside running joke, but appreciate you, man. Um, all right. And, yeah, we're going to be talking about him, David. So I'm going to start that one. We'll bring that one back. Um, right here, bro. He says, John, kind of terrified, honestly, since John and Kyle, um, you know, first-round picks. Solomon and Javon have flashes with lower return on investment. Glad you're back. You know, everybody keeps mentioning these two guys in the same sentence. And that's and I don't know if we want to do that. Okay. If we're talking Javon Kinlaw and we're talking Solomon Thomas, those are two different players. Solomon Thomas just never really had a ceiling as a projected pick. You, you drafted him as a three, four guy. That's what he played. And that's where he was dominant. You transitioned him, transitioned him immediately to a 4-3 end. Couldn't do that. Finally kicked him inside year three. Never panned out. You know, he's on, I think, his third or fourth contract, and he's a solid guy. Just no ceiling, you know. So, like, that's what it, Javon Kinlaw has ceiling. I would take Javon Kinlaw's best tape over anything Solomon Thomas has ever done. I would say probably the top ten plays that Javon Kinlaw have done would be better than any of the top ten plays Solomon Thomas. Now, the injury thing, that's a whole nother issue. But both are great locker room guys. Um, and I, I don't know. The, the Solomon one, everybody loved him, Solomon Thomas. And it was a miss. It was a miss. I don't think that the positional value was a miss. Now, I, I do have to tell you, we, we, we've got a little bit of work getting done on the house. And my dog's in here right now because the wife's away. So I'm just going to say Lucy might make an appearance. She's scratching at the door already. She does not like the, me podcasting with this light on. Uh, but anyway, if you hear scratching, my French Bulldog's going crazy in the, in, the, in the room. But that's okay. I, I could not wait. I have another show later today with a freaking legend, uh, Rob Louder, on the Striking Gold podcast, which is like one of my go-tos. Uh, so really excited. That's going to be 5 p.m. on his channel. So if you haven't checked that out yet, um, go check that out. and. Come join us. We're going to have a good time because that dude, he knows ball. Now, back to this question, bro, about Kyle and first-round picks. I, I don't know. I, I don't think that he's done poorly. I really, really don't, especially on the back end. Javon Kinlaw, ah, <clears throat> wasn't great, but good Lord, he was the best defensive lineman we had in the playoffs. The best. Yeah, I'm, I'm throwing both in there, too. Like He was that consistently good all through the playoffs of the Super Bowl. Yeah, the injuries were an issue, and that's a new phrase that has come up repeatedly by Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch, health history. And as we go through this and we talk about these players, health history matters. Niners do not target anymore, anymore. It took Reuben Foster and it took Javon Kinlaw for them to say, look, man, we want these guys that with a clean bill of health. Now, later in the draft, you can take chances, but not so much early in the draft as far as health history goes. That has not been an issue. Um, but I, I don't know. It's easy to look at the misses. But whenever you look at the misses of other teams versus the misses of the 49ers, the 49ers stack up as well, if not better than almost any other team. I mean, you just look at all the talent that's on this roster. Now, how much of that is in the first round? Well, you got Brandon Ayuk, you got Nick Bosa. Yeah, that's two home runs. Outside of that, you know, the, the Trey Lance miss, and I do call it a miss, that one probably hurt the most because that cost you three, right? So that's three misses. I don't mind if you want to equate it that way. But, you know, with you're sitting at 31, and again, I have 24 first-round grades. In this year's draft class, we're picking 31. The odds of you getting the first round talent, pretty slim. You're drafted a second round talented guy, even though it's in the first round. So the, the fact that they're picking 31 makes it a little less nervous. I I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> it's that's just me. 
Mike, he says, going to need another mock draft soon, chat. Yeah, we'll get one done uh, next couple days for sure. Um, <laughs> really want some offensive line. I like it. Um, he says, you know, Wayne talking about their drafted running back scares me a little bit. Wayne played running back, guys. And I'll talk to Wayne about this. We'll get it. We'll get a show together. Wayne played running back. It's his favorite position. So in this class, there's a lot of good running backs in that third, fourth, fifth round. You know, I would wait personally, but that's where the bulk of these running backs are all going to go. There might be one guy in the second round. You know, you got the speedster from Tennessee, or you got Jonathan Brooks. I think that's probably about it. Um, but there's, you're talking, you're going to have 15 guys going the third to fifth round running back wise. You know, that that's every other team in the NFL. I would not be shocked. There's a lot of guys. I really do hope they wait on running back unless it is Will Shipley. That would be the only running back that if the Niners drafted, I'd be like, that is perfect. Um, and even if that was in the third round, I wouldn't be upset. I Just because the translation is there, the fit is there, it gives you CMC insurance. He's not CMC, but that's just, you know, it's, it's what it is. So uh, Dave right here. He says, you know, Solomon wasn't a good fit. Great guy. Amazing human being. Uh, he was a tweener. Yep. Uh, tragedy affect him mentally. I mean, he had a lot going on with his sister, and he's turned that around for so much good. I love Solomon Thomas. I love him. Was he worth the first-round pick? No. If you knew exactly how Solomon Thomas would play, like up to this point in his career, and you could draft him on that, he'd be a third-round pick. A back-end third-round pick. That's probably where he should have went, not third overall. That hurts, but it's not like the dude sucked, right? And here's what's crazy. You look at Javon Kinlaw with where he's playing right now. I think Javon Kinlaw goes pretty close to back end, early second, back end first, because the tape that he's put out there. I'm not so sure that's a bust. I mean, we label these guys bust their sophomore year because Javon Kinlaw missed that time. Yeah, look at the whole four years. Was it amazing? No, but the glimpses were there, and that's what he was. The health cost you. That's your fault. That ain't his fault. That's your fault. You drafted him. That's you. His play, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Mark says, let's see the Frenchie. Well, uh, <laughs> she's running around. You can't see her right now, and my place is a disaster behind this screen. That's the fact. That's just evident. Um, yeah, right here, Alex, man. So they won't be making any Trent Balky memorial picks, huh? Not unless it's like six, you know, those fifth round comp picks, sixth, seventh round. I could see that. Now you go through now and in today's, you know, NFL, these guys are so big and so fast. It's pretty dang hard to find guys without some ACL in their past. I I'd say maybe 40% of the players that are going to be drafted have torn an ACL at some point. That's just off the top of my head. Probably a little lower. Um, but th that's kind of where we're at. And so you can't just say, oh, he's had a torn ACL. We got to move on. Now, if it's torn ACL last year and you haven't seen the recovery yet, okay, that's a legitimate question. But if somebody tore an ACL in 2021 and they've got two to three years production on that same knee afterwards and, you know, the explosiveness and all that stuff still there, then I I'm not concerned. I don't put that into the quote unquote health history issue. Um, that that that's just my own personal opinion, but uh, but but we'll see. All right, let let's do this. Let's dive into my top five edge rankings. Um, and you know these are just my rankings. I have three first round grades. My top two, and you know one of the guys that I'm higher on than most is Jared Verse out of Florida State. He's my number one edge. Um, I'm really really high on him. Six three two fifty four. I don't think the Niners have a chance to get him, but I just for me. If I had to bet on anybody in this class, like being the closest to a 10 sack guy year in and year out, it's Jared Verse for me. Um, number two is, you know, Leia Two Law Two. I have those two guys pretty close to each other. Law Two ceiling is higher. Verse is safer, way safer. Um, Law Two's health history, that's got some issues. But the tape, the technician, Oh, he's so freaking good. I don't think the Niners have a shot at either one of these guys. Dallas Turner might go first because he's got that burst that just everybody covets, that bend that everybody covets. Um, 
but I was a little lower on them. But those are my three first round grades. I don't think the Niners can sniff really any of those. Um, now we get to my number four, and now we're in second round tier. That's Chop Robinson. I love Chop Robinson. 6'2, 254. You know, he ran the 4 4 40. The biggest issue with him is, man, where's the production? That's rough. It's all projection. Chop is a very real possibility for the 49ers to draft. They have drafted guys like him in the past. Um, 21 years old, explosive. Probably the best first step in this draft. He is light versus the run. Um, you know, but if you want a speed rusher, he'd be number one on your board out of this entire thing. Very violent streak with his hands, like that. Um, yeah, he, he he's fun. You know, three sacks? You're drafting a guy with three sacks. There's guys with 19 sacks, you know, production-wise. And he's rushing. It's not like everything was shifted to him. Because Adisa Isaac, who I think, what's he? He's my number six player this draft, was on the opposing side. A lot of times they rotated, but still, like, it's not like this dude, they shifted focus to him. He just couldn't produce. And now you got to go through Penn State in this system Talk about Jason Oway. That dude had zero sacks, got drafted the first round, and now he's balling out for Baltimore. So, you know, that, that's kind of the way that it goes. I'm petting the dog. She's finally calming down a little bit. Um, but, you know, I like him. Sam Williams is my comp. B.J. Ojolari, those type of guys, second-round guys. Now he's a cleaner guy because he doesn't have the off-the-field stuff, or at least as far as I know. Um, you know, on a scale of 1 to 10, 49ers fit, he's a 9. He's a 9. Early second round grade. Right around 31 is where he should go. That's where he should go. Next up, I got Chris Broswell, who's, you know, Alabama. It's funny. There's two Alabama guys in the top five. There's two Penn State guys in the top six. And so you watch this tape and you can kind of see the difference. You know, 6'3", 250, he plays completely different. He's a 4'6 guy, which isn't slow. <laughs> you know, we talk chop and it's like, oh, 4'4", four, four, this dude's 460. That's one tenth, one hundred second, a little bit slower. A similar size, but that's pretty dang quick. And he's just burst instincts, 22 years old, high effort, makes a lot of plays after being blocked. And that's my thing. Like, how do you win? Is it just one way? Chop one way. Speed, burst. That's it. Broswell, a little bit more of a jack of all trades type of guy. He can win with burst. He went with effort. He went with hands. I mean, he could just win. And his IQ is really, really high. Now, you talk about kind of 13 sacks in the SEC. Come on now. You're talking about a guy, three sacks versus 13 sacks. You got to project some. You got to project some. Um, and I think that's kind of part of it. But, you know, I, I did say this. Ideal edge versus mobile quarterbacks. Like, this dude just instincts are off of the charts I, I just love the way that he saw everything I, I kept writing in my notes you know linebacker instincts as an edge player you know pursuit a plus you know just diagnosed that like it just kept showing up on tape smart savvy wins a myriad of ways um now uh let's see here he's kind of a one-year guy you know he didn't have a lot of production, but that's what Alabama does. They rotate. And I know Johnny Dale, who I respect probably more than any. I mean, I love that dude. Chris Broswell, but he's an Alabama guy. So you got to put that in there. I'm a Texas guy. Wade's a Michigan guy, right? This affects. I hate Alabama. I hate the state. I hate the school. Can't stand it. Whenever I would drive to Georgia growing up, my dad lived in Georgia. I lived in Dallas. And so every summer I'd go work for my dad, right? I would fill up right before I got to Alabama state lines. So when I drove across Interstate 20, my foot never had to step foot in Alabama. That's just the way it was for me. I can't say it, but this dude, he's a damn good player. Um, I really like him. Will Anderson Jr., like he played the same damn role. Joseph Asai, that's a Texas guy. He's a second round. Nine is a Niners fit. Like he is a fit. He fits. It's just what he does. Now, tear down. And this, and I'll just go through these guys real quick. These are my other second round grades, and I have all three of these guys lumped in together. Darius Robinson out of Missouri, bigger dude. You know, he's been one of the very first and most consistently mocked players to the 49ers. Then I got Adisa Isaac, chops 
you know, teammate. I like him. I think he's a much better football player. He just lacks the elite traits of chop. And then Javon Solomon. I have a second round grade on Javon Solomon. Um, I love this dude. Six foot, 246. Leverage. I mean, he's small, but jacked. You talk about big old bubble butt guy. I mean, this dude is... He's built. He looks like a big fullback, like back in the 80s, rushing the passer. Uh, this is Josh's personal favorite who helped me with all the draft stuff. And he is just, you know, 4 7 40, 23 bench plus reps, like 37 inch vertical. Niners met with him. He's older, 23 years old. He's played 52 games. This is Javon Solomon, edge out of Troy. Production. This dude, 17 sacks. He's 10th in NCAA history all time with 33 career sacks. So production, production, production. He, he's got it. Um, played in a three-man front, too. He, he went off the edge some, but this dude was lined up at a four-eye consistently. And if you know anything about Troy, it's not like they're playing you know cupcakes all the time. He produced to get some top-tier talent. No doubt about that. Um, stout versus double teams. You cannot move this guy. One, because of the leverage, but two, he's just so damn strong. Not a speed guy. Um, he's a leverage guy, but his first step is great. Um, you watch him versus the run, and it's just comical. He's so he's so awesome. Like they will try to like a, against the zone. He he will just grab a guy, an offensive tackle with his hand, and pick him up and move him to the opposite shoulder. And like two gap, an offensive tackle. On an outside run play, consistently, like he just does what he wants. He's a bulldog. He's mean as hell. Um, I said tape says first rounder. Metrics and NFL competition say third rounder. Um, wrestling background, and it shows graduated already with a criminal justice degree. You look at his PFF grades, they're as high as anybody. 90.9 overall, 90 pass rush, 81.9 run defense, 92.4 True pass set. Gosh, man. Uh, Noah Spence, D4 type of a guy because of the way he leverages. But it's not. he's not as fast as D Ford. But everything else about him screams D Ford. It just screams it. The bend around the edge is uncanny. And he just under leverages. Like, like it's awesome watching him play. Uh, 49ers fits a perfect 10, in my opinion. Met with the Niners already. That's Javon Solomon. So uh, where's he fit? Three, he's five, six, seven. He's my eighth guy, but he's a second-round player for me. I'm probably higher on him than most. Um, and we'll spend a little more time on the edge because this is, I mean, let's just be honest. Uh, the 49ers need it. And speaking with needing it, let's go with knee Lind. I didn't do that on purpose, but... That was pretty dang good Sedway right there. Invader Niner. Neyland looks like a player Kucerik might like. The 49ers met with him. He saw Marshawn Neyland out of Western Michigan. Um, 6'3", that's, that's Nick Bosa metrics, man. Height and weight, eh, a little shorter. Uh, 34 and a half inch arms. Now we're talking Trent Baalke type guy. Like, this dude's built like an offensive tackle. Um... 4 7 40. All right. 35 vertical. That's pretty good for a big guy. 21 bench press reps. Niners met with him. He's 23 years old. So he's on the older side, kind of like Solomon. Rugged and physical. Power. Controls old lineman consistently. At his best versus the run and controls the edge extremely well. Lacks the bend or speed of a day one edge rusher, uh, but gets the dirty work done. Um, probably just a first and second D lineman. Could move inside some, but. That's not really what it is. Effort is always top notch and may have already reached his full potential. Um, you know, you watch the Iowa tape, which Iowa tape is always boring when the Iowa offense is out there. Um, but showed he belonged versus Iowa. Destroyed several of their tight ends and offensive tackles, and that's the tackle in tight end school. Like, so you could talk Western Michigan, but there's tape out there against the best of the best, not the Iowa's the best, but from offensive line tight end perspective. That's what they do, right? That's Ference. That's what he creates. He blew him up. It, a lot of times was the best player on tape of the offense and defense. Um, just goes through O lineman consistently with ease. O lineman hate playing against them. Bully stack and shit. I mean, like I, I I hope that through 
some of these terms, these players come alive. And, and that's what I want. And again, he was a 400 meter uh, regional champion and a high jumper in high school. So he, he's, he's built crazy wingspan, 37 games played. And it's funny because his change of direction on tape isn't there, but he goes to the combine and his 20 yard shot on three cone were like amazing. So the tape and the, if you're a metrics guy, you love him because he's got crazy arms and the metrics pop off the charts. But then you look at him at six sacks at Central Michigan. All right. He's a pass rusher, not really his thing. He's a better run guy. Um, Joe Tryon with less pass rush, Rob Nikovich. That's the type of player he is. I got a third round grade on him. A very, very fun player. I, I agree with you. Um, so uh, right here, let's go through some of these uh, comments that I might may have missed because I want to bounce back just a little bit. Vince, he says, yeah, if the blocker gets their hands with leverage on chop, the rep is over. That's a speed guy. And that's why those teams covet 34-plus inch arms from the offensive tackle is to stop the speed guys. Niners, not so much. But, it, like, that that's just kind of the way that it goes. And so, uh, uh, Brandon Dorless is a guy I liked. I don't know where to put him. He's huge. Edge, defense, tackle, don't care. He's a damn good football player. And, and, yeah, if you like Darius Robinson, Darius, Brandon Dorless, you can get him around later, and they're pretty much the same damn guy. There, there's no doubt about that. Niners met with both, by the way. So and I, I, I'm not against either. Nick says, yep, a bigger run-stopping defensive end, please. If that's the case, you want, you know, probably in this order, this would be my rankings, you would probably go Darius Robinson, then you'd go Neyland, then you would go Doorless. Those are your three big run-stuffing defensive ends. There's more, but that gives you those options, um, you know, if they're there. Uh, Juke, he says, you know, we should trade back out of the 31st pick and get more picks. Maybe. I got 24 first-round grades. That's me. And my last first-round grade is Kool-Aid McKinstry. That's a corner. We'll talk about him in a bit. If all 24 are gone, I think you trade back. I, I think that's the right call. If I'm GM and one of those 24 fall, dude, I'm good. Probably not trading up for any of them unless one of the offensive tackles falls. That's the only position I'd probably trade up for. Maybe Cooper DeGene just because I love that dude so much. I, he's just one of the most fun players I've ever seen play the sport from a corner position. Um from a returner position, from a nickel position, from a safety position. He's just fun, man. He's electric. So we'll see that. Ooh, and Vader says he's got a six-round grade on Solomon. And, yeah, there's going to be differentiation. If you, if you like metrics and length, uh, like the Colts or the Jaguars, they might not even have this dude on their board. But you look at the 49ers, like, we've got a lot of guys like him. We brought in guys like him. Shanahan has brought in guys like him. And so, like, El Elvis Doomerville is Javon Solomon. Like, you see what I'm saying? Like, a lot of teams don't want anything to do with Elvis because he was six foot. No, no, we want length. We want size. We want leverage. Well, you bring Elvis Doomerville in, that dude gets 10 sacks consistently. Like, you, you see what I'm saying? Like, if, if you've had the type and you've experienced success with that, um, then there you go. Tobias right here. Where do you have Dorless? Man, I've changed him back and forth. And I'm a little later on him than most. I got a fourth round grade on him. I've got him at edge right now, but that's because I'm looking at this from a Niner situation. I think that's where they would put him. You know, edge to DT, and you move him back and forth. Who knows? I like him. But because it's just like this tweener status, you know, we, we, we talked about Solomon Thomas earlier. I I got a fourth round grade on him, right? What did I say? I said, if we knew everything about Solomon Thomas that we know now and how his career would pan out, he would have been a, a third round pick, fourth round pick. That's what Brandon Dorless is. Like, that's what it is, in my opinion. I, I think they're so close to the same. Um, that's just me. That's just me. Uh, let's see here. Keep looking down. Uh, I like Booker and Trice. Man, Trice, his tape is so good. You're talking about Trice out of Washington. 
I've got a late third round grade on it, and I don't like it. I want to move it down, like in the opposite way. He just tested so poorly. I, I, I mean, let me look up. I hated it, man. I was really, really upset at. at... There we oop, oop. Braylon Trice. Like, he just tested so poorly. Arm length 32, hands 9, 40 yard dash, 472. Skipped a lot of the workout stuff, but like, I'm not an arm length wingspan guy. But whenever you don't have any metrics outside of the top or bottom 10 percentile, that's a problem. And whenever you watch his tape and you're like, okay, like he might be a good athlete. And then you're like, oh, yeah, he's not a good athlete. Like, that was just an issue. But the tape, says, you know, second to early third. Metrics say fifth rounder, sixth rounder undraftable. That's a problem there. And so you look at somebody like a Javon Solomon that I'm high on, yeah, there's some of his metrics where it's like, oh, that's a trouble thing, but most of his metrics are freaking incredible. Like if I pull up Javon Solomon, like I can't believe these two guys play the same position. Vertical jump, 86th percentile. Broad jump, 67th percentile. Bench press, 50%. 40-yard debt, this is Solomon we're talking about, 67th percentile. Hand size, 96th percentile. Arm length, 63%. Like, it's not all that, but height and weight are low. But they're as low as, you know, Braylon Trice. Um, I mean, Austin Booker's more fun out of Kansas. He, he He's a fun guy. Um, <laughs> Juan, my man, get me through the work day with draft talk. John Chapman, Juan Solace, you were the best there ever is. Um, Solomon, probably third round. Solomon, probably going to go in the third round. Um, teams that value tape are just going to love them. That's just me. I, I just think that's where it's going to be. So, uh, those are our defensive tackle or defensive edge guys. Now, let's transition. Let's jump over. Let's talk big boys. Let's go interior defensive tackles, baby. Defensive linemen that I just freaking love. You know, one of my favorite players. Again, I'm a Longhorn. I don't care. Um, Byron Murphy is just unbelievable to me. And he, he's just outside of my top 10 on my big board. I just can't see how he misses. He's just too clean. Niners probably not going to get a chance at him. The fact that he played nose tackle when Tavondre Sweat was on the same team should tell you something. Six foot two ninety seven. He's the new hybrid. You know, this is somebody probably, you know, if he wasn't playing football, would be six foot two sixty, but bulked up and it shows strong. 28 bench press reps, anchors versus double teams, as well as almost anybody in this class. He splits them. Technician, um, can shoot gaps. Can pass rush. He can do it all. Uh, he is just so freaking fun. But explosiveness nine, block shedding nine, uh, uh, versatility ten. Grady Jarrett, like this dude is just, just disruptor. He's twenty one years old. Upside, upside, upside. Athletic tasting. He ran a four eight off the charts. Everything. Can't find anything wrong with him. There's there's no knock on this guy. There's none. Not on his film. Not on his character not on his metrics, not on his testing, clean, clean. Um, that's why I don't think there's any chance in the world the Niners will have a shot at, at getting Byron Murphy. If they did, oh, man, that, that would be awesome. It would just be so cool, man. Uh, Johnny Newton, that, that's my number two. And it's not like I have Murphy over Newton, but I have them both in the first round. They're my only two first-round tackles. Uh, Invader Niner says, you know, Newton looks like the classic three technique the Niners look for. I agree. 6'1", 295, 21 years old, undersized penetrator. You know, it, now he's got a little bit of an issue because you don't have all the metrics because he had the Jones fracture. Um, but, I mean, good gosh. he You look at his, his, his weigh-in, 6'1", 295, and you're like, huh. And I kept writing in his, you know, his write-up. Very hard to evaluate. The size-power combo and inconsistent tape. Like, it doesn't make sense the way he plays and the way he's built. For a 6'1", 295, okay, that's a very common height, weight, you know, 
You know what that plays like at the defensive tackle position. Then you watch him play, and it's just like, this dude plays like a 6'3", 330 guy. He plays like Ken Law plays. Very similar. Just bully and smacking dudes in the head and popping guys in the chest and their head flies back. Like, he is a mean, dancing, bear-type guy. But 6'1", 295 with 32-inch arms. Tiny arms. Tiny hands. He's got, like, small quarterback hands. Like, it's just... I'm just saying the tape and the metrics sometimes don't match up. That's not necessarily negative. It's just confusing. The injury, that's going to dock him just a little bit, but he's a first-round player. There's no no doubt about that. Always has a plan consistently on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, (laughs) Players cannot stick to their blocks versus him. Just handles O-linemen consistently. Elite first step. Uh, I didn't like this, and, and this isn't his fault. He played a lot. He played 749 snaps. Most of defensive tackles in this class this year played about 400. And so this dude, true three-down lineman, and he would wear down in games because he was just playing 70 snaps a game and a defensive tackle. And Illinois didn't have the rotation, so they just kept him out there. So that's hard. Do you dock him for that? Not his fault. He's an Iron Man. Um, but he played a lot. Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year. Uh, missed the combine again. Jones fracture, pinky toe. Um, but man, he's just fun. I, I, Kalisha Kansi, Sheldon Richardson, that type of player. Uh, he's a first round player, first round player. Niners fits eight health history. Yeah, I'm not too concerned about that, but you know, you guys, if you ever complained about the feet and Armstead, I'm not sure you want to complain. You want another defensive tackle with a foot injury. I, I talked to him a little bit about that. I, I don't get the access to these reports. And so I don't know exactly where the Niners got, you know, all, all that kind of stuff and, and where that is and where that isn't. I, I, I don't know. But he, he's not going to fall that far. I, I just don't say it. Uh, right here, Peanut, he says, what traits do you think the Niners covered the most from the defensive tackle position to replace Armstead? Uh, take on double teams, pass rush, height, strength. Yeah, look, people don't talk about this very often because it's not fun. John Lynch and the 49ers have been so freaking consistent in what they want in defensive tackles. They want to be stout against the run. Period. Period. And it goes back to DeForest Buckner. And everybody talks about how the Niners were wrong in getting rid of DeForest Buckner and whatever else. I'm not here for that argument. They weren't listening. DeForest Buckner's not great against the run. He's a swim slant guy without gap integrity. Now he can, you know, be awesome. And I'm not saying he's a bad player against the run, but like the Niners want stout and keep the linebackers clean. If I swim my offensive guard, Fred Warner's getting killed. That's now not every team plays that way. The Colts don't play that way. They don't play the same way we do. They want gap penetration. That's what they want from their interior guys. Niners don't want that. So they want true gap sound guys that can read and redirect offensive linemen. That's what they want. And so that's what I think is important. Now, the guys that they went and got, you know, I think they see uh, Malik Collins. That's the, you know, Armstead replacement. It's a one-year deal with the second-year option. But, you you know, I, I think, I think that's what's kind of important. And so I these guys, and they've got it. Now they can just go for upside. But I, I love that question. You've got to be decent against the run. You've got to be stout against double teams. We play with the 49ers play with the lightest six man boxes in the NFL. The lightest. We have our four two. And we're not even hiding somebody coming up most of the time. Um and, and so like that's an issue. So if you're a uh, defensive tackle for the 49ers, you're facing double teams. So whenever I'm grading these players, if they can't, you know, handle a double team, they're not a fit. They are not a fit. And so you've got to be able to hold your own. And and that's why I, I think it's one of the lost causes, you know, now in college football, because you'll see these guys not know how to take on a double team. Why? Because 
they'll have all these blitzers and they're stunning all the time and they're doing all that. My dog's going crazy. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, all right. Um, now, my number three guy, and now we're into the second round grade territory, is Ruka Rororo um, out of Clemson. He is 6'4, 295. Like, yeah, 6'4, 295. Like, he's a big dude. It wins with athleticism, 34 inch arms. You're talking length. You're talking, he's built like a giant linebacker. No bad, like he's a smaller Kinlaw uh, as far as just build. Like you see him, you're just like, good Lord. Now, Kinlaw, like 6'5", 340. But this is a get off the bus first guy that's just intimidating by physical look and play style. Uh, moves incredibly well. Lower body explosiveness might be best in the class. That's how he won. Plays like the Energizer Bunny. Great at pass, pushing the pocket into the quarterback's lap, um, disrupting. He is the best defensive tackle, which as, as a D-line coach, I would always tell my players, get their hands up, don't jump. So if you can't get to the quarterback, get your hands up. Um, he's the best I've ever seen at it, like ever. Like there, he leverages the guy into the quarterback and always gets his paws up. I guarantee you, I, I don't know if this is the answer, but I'm telling you right now, if you asked him, which defensive tackles do you model your game after, this dude's going to say Chris Jones first. I would bet everything I have on it. Like, he plays like a mini Chris Jones. He plays just like him. Um, and I can tell you, Chris Jones is a mean man. I was at the draft. He got drafted, and I went to the bathroom. I was having a couple too many beers. I was having a good time. We were broadcasting back then. And so I'm going to the bathroom. This was in uh, Chicago. And I'm coming out, and I'm checking my phone, and I bump into a brick wall, and I look up. Not a brick wall. I, Chris Jones almost knocked me down in the lobby, uh, which was funny. He was really nice. He was with his family. But I was like, oh, congratulations, man. Big fan of what you do. Little did I know this jerk would two Super Bowls. Whatever, but Rucororo, Chris Jones, is he that talented? Does he have the body? No. Where did Chris Jones go? Early second round. That's where Rucororo should go. Like that's just what it is. Hustle, um, pursuit player, A plus, refuses to stay blocked, stout and short yardage. That's the thing, right? So back to the question: What do Niners like? Stout. They like stout. Five sacks, four quarterback hits. Um, he's just good. Uh, versatility nine, Nick Farley, David on Minata, uh, second round grade. That's where I got him. So that's Rook. And I know he's a fun player, right? I mean, right here. Yeah. The 49ers Rook Aurora was my second round pick. I would love that pick. I, I, he is one of my favorite players now invader Niner should be there at 63. I don't know about that. I would love for that to be the case, but the NFL is a mimic league, and there's a lot of stout run stuffers in this draft. We'll talk about a couple next, right? Chris Jenkins, Devondre Sweat. There's not a lot of high-producing defensive tackles that are good versus the run and good versus the pass and have that versatility. If you gave me odds on this, I'm not trying to go against you, Invader, at all. I really do appreciate you, and your comments are always very, very well thought out. I personally believe... Rook's going to be off the board around 55. Well, we're talking eight picks. So would he be there at 63? Run that card in. Hey, I got no problem with that. And like I was talking to Brad and, you know, Brad, we were asked, I think this was with Peacock and um, Brad Graham. And Brad's like, is there a dark horse pick at, at 31? And, and Brad brought up Rook. Like he wouldn't be shocked if you're talking first round territory. Now that's a little rich for me. But I don't think it'd be a bad pick. Ah, he, he's he's a fun player. I, I he's a fun player. Now, next up, number four, I've got, and this is a tier down, still second round grade. I got Rook early second. Chris Jenkins, I got kind of middle second round. Michigan run stuffer, twenty two years old, liter, leadership, physical freak. Yeah, he he's that Chris Jenkins son. 6'2", 299, 4940, 30-inch vertical, 29 bench press reps. Nickname is The Mutant. He's just a beast, man. Um, and it's funny because I thought he performed better at the Combine. He didn't. Um, 
on tape, his lateral change of direction is just awesome. And so I thought, you know, three cone, shuttle, all that stuff was going to be awesome. He looks stiff, but didn't translate to the combine. But uh, you don't knock him for that because of the tape, but it was just like, ah, I was expecting, you know, I think Jenkins could have elevated himself a little bit, but he's a, he's a run guy. That's it. Um, I love how it looked completely blocked and still make the play consistently. I, I put NBA Jam, one of my favorite things about him. If he makes one play, hone in on Chris Jenkins. He's about to make another play. This dude takes over series, back-to-back -back plays. Like, he is a high-energy guy. Will be a linebacker's best friend in the run game. Might be the best run game team player in the draft. Like, he just does his job. He does not let double-team combo box get to the linebackers behind him. Pure run stuffer. Um, yeah, pass rush productivity, not there. Not there. Um, that's the issue. And so, like, two sacks, zero quarterback hits. Like, I'm, he cannot move forward. He doesn't. And so, if you want to stop the zone, like, Chris Jenkins is a guy I really hope does it go to the NFC West because if you want to stop the zone scheme, like guess what? Chris Jenkins, that's what he does outside zone. He might be the best defensive tackle against outside zone in this draft consistently. Like he is that damn good at it. But again, you're waving bye-bye to really almost any pass rush product pr production at all. So what do you value? What do you value? Invader, I like Jenkins better than Aroro. Yeah, against the run, I do. I like Jenkins better against the run than Johnny Newton. I like Jenkins better against the run than Byron Murphy. Like, he is the best versus the run in this class. But then you look at pass rush productivity, I have him at a four. You see what I'm saying? Like, what gets DTs paid in today's NFL? And it's pass rush. Now, what gets you to stay on a roster you stop the run, and especially with a team like us where our defensive tackles have to be stout and protect our linebackers. Chris Jenkins is as good as it gets, as good as it gets. Um, I put Jonathan Bullard, um, Amobi Okoye. That's his athletic comp. I don't know if you remember him. And I think Amobi Okoye was drafted by Kyle Shanahan in Houston. He was the OC then, I think. I might be wrong on my tenure there, but I'm just saying. Block shedding nine. Hand technique eight, pass rush moves four. But he's so good against the run, man. Uh, he, he's just awesome. Mid-second round grade. Uh, and then my last one, Tavondre Sweat, who I dropped. Not in defensive tackle rankings. I dropped him in my overall and my tier rankings, about 12 spots in the second round. Uh, he just got arrested with a DUI, and I think it was a bad DUI. So uh, whatever. Like, come on, man, three weeks. And I'm a Texas guy. I, yeah, I, I, teams might drop him off their board. Now, he was a known partier. Yeah, I'm a Texas guy. I read the boards. He was a known partier anyway. Um, So teams, they got to have their meetings. They got to figure that out. 6'4", 366. They don't make people like this. 23 years old. Tape's hilarious. It's, it's, it's comical what this dude can do at that size. Um, snap counts will be an issue, but guess what? He played more snaps than Byron Murphy did. It, it's it, brothers, Josh sweat for the Eagles. I guess he just, yeah, they, they signed him long-term. Did they, or did they swap him? I think they swapped him. Uh, anyway, 62 games played at Texas is impressive. Um, played in th 13 games as a true freshman, good hands, hips, better than almost any big man I've ever seen. Pad levels, always an issue. And he could just kind of move dudes. Will he be able to do that at the next level? More of a disruptor than a snap guy. Improved every year um, at Texas. And unanimous All-American, Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year, won the Outland Trophy. Like, he's a he's got the highest run grade stop for the defensive tackles. Now, Jenkins, way more reliable, less question marks on and off the field, got the pedigree. You're getting the same type of player. Right now, the ceiling obviously is going to be higher for Tavondre Sweat, but also the bust potential. Um, and <laughs> Niner, I think Sweat played at 380. Um, uh, yeah, I wouldn't be shocked at all. He was supposed to come in way below 360. The combine came in right at 366. 
Like, discipline's an issue. Now, you've got five years of steady increased production, but yeah, like, it's Andre Sweat. He might not be in the NFL for very long. The tape is incredible. Um, yeah, right, right here. No such thing as a good DUI. Yeah, I was, I, I was talking blood alcohol content level. Like he was, he was gone, gone, gone. Major character issue. Now, where do character issues go? Where do they go? Back into the second round, third round. That's where they go. Not by the 49ers. And he probably not going to be on there. And probably not going to be on the board, to be honest with you. So um, I, I loved watching him play. Kendrick Ellis, Terrence Cody, that type of guy. Uh, you know, I don't think he goes. You know, Braden Fisk is, I've got him in the second round, and I hate it. I know a lot of people love him. You watch the Combine, and he was everybody's favorite player because he just looks so awesome, and he did. His tape sucks. <laughs> it's so bad. Like, I cannot drop this dude far enough. Like, there, if there's an anti-John Chapman player, and I don't like being negative, he's going to get drafted in the second round. It's where he's going to go. I don't think he should go there. 6'5", 292, that's awesome. Tiny arms, 4'7", 40. He's the fastest defensive tackle. He's got the... Biggest vertical, best broad jump, 26 bitch press, explosive, explosive, explosive. Looks like a running back out there. But you put him on there, and you watch the tape. He can't handle a double team to save his life. I saw this dude get driven back 10-plus yards, back-to-back -back place. The next play, he split the double team and made a play. And it's just like, all right. Like, the athleticism is there. The technique's not. Like, he's one of the most raw players in this draft, but he's 24. Oh. 24 years old. Played for five years at Western Michigan and then transferred to F FSU. And he had six sacks. Ah, uh, I don't know, man. The athleticism says first round. The tape says fourth round. You... You take what you want. Oh, what's up, man? We got David Waller in the house. What's up, brother? Uh, my good friend. My good friend. Yeah, right here. Aaron says, where do character issues go? Chiefs and Cowboys. No doubt about it, man. Andy Reid uh, has no cares what you do on and off the field. Does not care. Women, children, sign them up. Like, he does not care and won't care. And I remember writing on my report about Rasheed Rice. Character concerns. Um, it's what it is. And, and that that's just those two teams. You know, it used to be Belichick and uh, Pete Carroll. Uh, they're gone now. So we'll, we'll kind of see what happens there. But, yeah, I mean, shoot, you you trade. Imagine trading for Frank Clark <laughs> after the fact, after the second and third time. Imagine giving. Yeah, I don't I don't want to go off on this tangent. Um, anyway, Aaron right here, he says favorite draft memory was John guessing who the Cowboys would take. And he said, probably the guy with the worst rap sheet right before they grabbed the Kentucky quarter. Yeah. And that was like, that was their guy. He got kicked off of two teams. Oh, what was his name? That Kentucky corner. Oh, he was a damn good fun player, but yeah, just like he got kicked off of LSU, I think. And then Kentucky, is that right? Or was it, ah, I don't know. Somebody, man, who was that corner? Oh, it's right there on the tip of my tongue. Anyway, um, now, defensive tackle is probably one of the most fun positions. And every time I'm on the clock in a mock draft and I take a defensive tackle, I'm very happy. I'm like, oh, that's great value. Until I'm on the next round, and I'm like, oh, all these guys are still there? Like, I'm not going to go into depth here, but, like, I got two third-round guys, Dwayne Carter out of Duke. And Mason Smith, LSU, those are my third-round tackles. I've got three fourth-round tackles I really like, and I thought about moving them up individually, but I was like, man, they have some issues. McKinley Jackson, Texas A&M, Michael Hall Jr., OSU, uh, Leonard Taylor the third out of Miami. I'm like, all right. Uh, Tyler Davis, the other Clemson guy. I got a fifth-round grade on him because I think he's limited in his upside. But, man, his tape, I'd take Tyler Davis's tape over Michael Hall Jr., and everybody loves Michael Hall Jr. Like I, it, I just don't understand why certain players catch buzz. 
Um, oh, there it is. My man, Doors fan. Oh, the Jim Morrison. He's going to know everything, right? Kelvin George Joseph is the player you're thinking of. Sure as heck was. Ah, oh, dude, the Doors. And you got my Kelvin jo Joseph. You're like my favorite person, Doors fan 91. Uh, that's what's up. I listen to the Doors consistently, man. Uh, they, they're just, and that's the thing. Like, I'm in the stage now where I'm doing my draft work because the film's silent. And so I go through, you know, different decades, you know, 70s. Then I do 80s, then I do 90s, then I do 2000. Like, and so I, I try to like, you know, listen to something till I start getting tired. And then I'm like, all right, I gotta switch it up. Let's go with something off the wall or whatever else. Um, yeah. Uh, and right here, oh David, I dude, David is the king of clapbacks. That's that's what that's his love language. And I do love you, Walner, so much. Cowboys fan, he says, remember, you signed Gregory. All right, what was Randy Gregory's issue? Right? It was weed. I don't put that into the character issue. Randy Gregory ain't hurting nobody. Um, now he's very undisciplined, and we saw that. Steve Wilkes' hair went gray because of Randy Gregory, more so than it was. I couldn't stand Gregory. He was a value thing. But no, no, no. It, like He does not. Kelvin Joseph and Randy Gregory do not go into the same thing. We want to talk Sam Williams. Uh, we want to talk the UFC fighter that, that like, come on, man. Like, those in glass houses, buddy. Uh <laughs> <laughs> and right here, David, Kelvin Joseph, currently on the Chiefs. Look at that. Um that that's just that's just the the, the way that it goes. Um ah oh, man. Uh yeah, uh Tyler Davis. I have him in the fifth round. I, I think his his upside's just limited, but I like his tape. I really, really do. He just can't move sideways, <laughs> he just goes straight ahead every time it just plows into the guy in front of him which works, and he's a good teammate. He, he would free up Ruka Rororo on a bunch of stunts. Like, and Niners have been running a lot of stunts lately. So, like, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, Waller says, Tahiti rocked. You missed it, my friend. Dude, we got to get together soon. Uh, uh, no doubt about it. So, right here. Okay, let, let's get into let, – let's talk Michael Hall, okay? I, I'm low on him than I think everybody else. Michael Hall Jr., 6'2", 290, small, 33 and a half inch arms, 10 inch hands. Didn't test really anything at the combine. 21 years old, undersized, uses it to his advantage. Shoots gaps with the best at him. And that's the thing. He, he's a shooter. Like, this is somebody that just wants to get in between whatever else. He's got no bad weight on him. Wins early or doesn't win at all. Double teams are a major issue. Doesn't anchor at all. B, I, I saw like three or four plays. Dang it, what game did I watch? I, I got to look back at my files. Um, I, wa I watched two games in a row where he ran into his linebacker on one foot hopping because of a double team consistently. And so, yes. Some teams are going to love Michael Hall Jr. out of Ohio State. I get that. And I have to be careful talking about Ohio State guys because if I criticize Ohio State players, I get the most negative emails ever. Uh, that's okay. I hate Ohio State, but that's not why I'm low on him. I just, I don't, might be a pass rushing defensive tackle only his rookie year and might only be that for the rest of his career. Um, will not be on several teams boards as a true tweener. Yes. And right here, Vader, the upside is there. Quick twitch, natural energy, all that stuff. But again, if you want somebody in a light box, I ain't picking him. No way. Like I, his run grade, he got a 69.5 run defense grade, right? And so I started looking at it like, okay, that's not terrible. But it's he'll slip through and get a tackle for loss. And then he'll get blown up and knocked into, you know, his linebacker. It's just not consistent. What, what's Kosarek's number one thing? Cons, uh, consistency is the truest measure of greatness. I think he got it from Sala, and I'm sure Sala got it from somebody else. But it's just like, ugh, I, 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 I don't know. Two sacks. Okay, cool. You're talking about this disruptor and oh man, he pass rusher. He got two sacks. You, you give me two sacks from a guy who's just a pass rusher. Like, what what are we doing here? Like, 
I can't find the metrics. I can't find the grades. I can't find anything that tells me besides, but, and that's the thing. I could put highlights together to make Michael Hall Jr. look like a first round pick with ease. And what do I always say? I, I say the same thing. Highlights are like reading a dating profile that this dude made up. You're not getting any of the flaws. Game tape, it's like interviewing the exes. There's a lot of ugly. There are a lot of ugly. So scouts will like Michael Hall Jr. way more than coaches will. Because the tape says, imagine being Fred Warner and seeing that and just going like, coach, I'm going to have guards on me every time this dude's on the field. That's not a Niners priority. Now, now watch the Niners draft him in the second round. And, hey, I'm wrong. My 49ers fit on Michael Hall Jr. is a four. It's a four. It's a four. I don't know. And I, I love disagreeing with people. Yeah, I'm not saying I'm right. But I it's my evaluation, right? Like, if I was in the room... I'm going to be honest, and this is what I'm going to say, and this is what I saw. A lot of flashes, a lot of negative flashes. Man, I could put together a 10-play 10 10 play highlight tape to combat your 10-play good tape. Mine will show you this dude is going to get your players pissed off. And so I'm, I'm not saying – I don't. it's taste. It's flavor, right? I, I don't know. I put ketchup on my hot dog. People get mad at that. I go to Chicago. It doesn't work. Bears? Hey, man, this might be your guy. And right here, I think Kuserik will love Hall. There you go. There you go. And we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Philip, what's up, man? Hashtag CC. Nick, no small defensive tackle, please. We need someone to take on double teams and run stuff. Yes. Again, that's what I want. That's what I see. Um, Joe, thank you, man. People have stopped watching only highlights. And, like, and he's got some good tape. It's just... I stack these players vertically, okay? So I go through all the defensive tackles, and I start with, and again, I'll just be transparent. I, I use mock draft database to build my list, that, not my rankings, of the order in which I want to watch. And I watch top down. And it's 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 fun because you see, all right, these two players, man, that's close. All right, that's a huge jump. All right, these players are all clumped. These players are all clumped. And so I was watching, let, let me look where he is. Because I think that this is a good conversation piece. I know the show's going long. Like, Michael Hall is 69th, nice, um, overall on Mock Draft Database. Okay, so what are we talking there? We're talking early third round. Early third round. And he's ranked ahead of Rukororo, Leonard Taylor, Makai Wingo, Dwayne Carter, like, uh, Egbin, uh, Yanni, I can't say that, Justin uh, out of Alabama. Uh, McKinley, like he's ranked ahead of all these guys. And I'm sure there are teams that feel the same way as these consensus ranks. But this is the beauty of the draft. No two scouts are going to have the same rankings. No war room, no two war rooms are going to be the same. One player that one team loves, they, they're on different things. So how many teams are 4-2-5? All right, you're down to 20 teams. All right, how many teams like the blitz or don't like the blitz in the Niners situation? We're the least blitz team freaking ever. Now we're down to five teams, okay, that run a 4-2-5 and don't blitz. And we want light boxes. And so, like, I don't know. Well, those teams, what are they going to do? You know, uh, we'll see. We'll see. Now, uh, before I jump on to the next spots, we got three more positions. So this is going to be a long show, which is probably not smart today. Uh, I've got lots of other stuff, but that's okay. Uh, best way to support the show and whenever we release our draft book, which is going to be Saturday, three more days, uh, this is the way you get it. I am so excited to announce our new platform launch, the49ersrush.com. We've been active on Patreon for years, and we're still going to keep that community going. But the49ersrush.com has everything Patreon offers and a bunch more. You want to watch player breakdowns? Guess what? You click that. 
It's filtered based on players. You want to see Javon Hargrave, what he brings, some CMC tape broken down, IU, Jair Brown. We've got hundreds and hundreds of tapes. on. Now, you want football 101. You want to learn scheme. Guess what? We've got every single offensive, defensive, special team snap. Head over to the 49ersrush.com, sign up, join the community, and plus we got a seven-day free trial. So. All right. Um, now, I, I think what I want to do for this show, um, I'm going to put the back end guys on a separate show. I want to, I want to, I don't want to fly through the linebackers and corners and safeties. Um, I didn't know we'd spend an hour on just DTs and edge guys. It only did the top five. Like I got a lot more than that, but uh, we'll, we'll spend another show on those back end guys. Let's get to some questions because there, there's some good stuff. Um, that came across that I want to talk about um, right here. You know, Juke Joint says, you know, his defensive tackle, he's got Chris Jenkins one, Byron Murphy two, Rook three, then Brandon Fisk. And so, man, I'm curious, no Johnny Newton. Uh, I don't know if that was just a mission, but I, I, I don't think our five are different. You know what I mean? Um, I got Fisk just outside, but yeah, I mean, everybody's kind of shaken up. Kind of, kind of what what you got there. Now I will say this: sounds like run support is kind of your thing with Jenkins going early, and I got no problem on that at all. Um, now I do got to give you a little bit of linebacker talk, just because I said we were at the start. David, my man, he says I know it's not a need, but linebacker Edrin Cooper is my favorite draft prospect this this year. He is awesome, man. And again, I hate A and M with a passion. I'm a Longhorn. He is fun. 6'2", 230, like he would play 6'2", 230. That's Dre Greenlaw. That's who it is, but he's got some long arms, 34-inch arms, 4'5", 40-yard dash. He is fast, 22 years old, sideline to sideline ace with blitzing ability, different, decent coverage already. Like he's a Niners fit. We'll start day one. Long arms, plays fast. Speed is easy to see, smooth. 37 games as an off-the-ball linebacker. Makes it easier transition to the NFL than others in this class. Like a lot of guys were kind of edge, you know, three, four type guys, blitzed off the edge, whatever else. No, no, no. This guy got it. In between the tackles, yeah, I think Will is what he needs to play, not Mike. I, I want him as a Will. I want him in Drake Greenlaw role. Now that's a problem. And I guess my question is, you know, David, what, what do you say to this? I got a late second round grade on this guy. Are we going to spend a late second round grade? On a guy that he's not better than Drake Greenlaw. Maybe he will be. I don't think he will be. But, like, what are you going to do? We're only in three linebacker situations, 20 plays a game tops. And as the NFL continues this trend, that might be 17 plays a game in 2024. Like, do we want to spend a second round premium pick on an off the ball linebacker that might play 17 plays a game? I don't know. And so, this is something that I know other people disagree with me on. I would not spend a pick on a linebacker in the top four rounds with our current roster. Ah, man, he's fun, though. Darius Leonard, Bobby Okariki. Those are my athletic and play style comps. He's good. He is good. Eight sacks. This dude got more sacks than half the defensive ends we talked about. <laughs> Chop Rock. He's got twice as many sacks last year. As Chop Robinson, who's probably going to go two rounds before him, um, which I don't know, that's comical to me. Um, yeah, I, I don't know, I don't, I don't know. Um, Cedric Gray, yeah, I like Cedric Gray a lot. He's a fun player, man. Um, and and so yeah, I, I don't know where the where the need is, and and I'm with you right here, Nick. You know. This is probably a late round pick on inside linebacker, lower on the needs list. Um, and that pick can beat out two. We already have two youngsters there. We got two of them that showed promise, not consistency. Ah, uh, man. Yeah, yeah, that one's. Oh, we got Josh here. What's up, man? Josh, dude, freaking stud. Stud. Uh, so, right here, we got to give some corner talk. We got to give some corner talk just a little bit. We'll do a whole back end linebackers corner safety episode. Um, 
Juke says this, Renato Green is the most slept on DB in the draft. He pretty much shut down neighbors and Thomas. Um, he's fun, man. Uh, 5'11", 186 out of Florida State. Tiny arms, 31 arms, 9 hands, 4'4", four, 9 four, speed. That's good. Held his own versus Malik Neighbors. That's what I said. I, I didn't shut him down. 16 forced incompletions. That's 6th in NCAA. Can play all nickel spots. Pesky. Yeah, my favorite thing about watching Renardo Green was he just chippy, man. That dude just wakes up on the wrong side of the bed every day, and I love it. Like, I love nasty DBs. I struggle with soft, finesse defensive backs. I don't know why. I just think I, you want to be mean. I like mean. And he, you know, headbutts, chests, like always up, always talking. And you can just see he just pisses off wide receivers. It's like the Juwan Jennings approach. Like he just makes people mad. And I, a kid is tough, absorbs wide receiver speed on routes, doesn't grab and pull. And so he, he used his hands. I, I thought like, man, NFL vet hand usage already throughout routes. Uh, wish he had more work in the slot. That's where I want him at, 5'11", 186. But yeah, I think that's his best fit. He's very good in man. Just makes life hard on one, wide receivers. And, and that's kind of the 49ers MO. They want these guys that make the, it's difficult at the catch point, right? Not necessarily shut down, not necessarily ball skills, not necessarily any of that. No, no, no. Difficult at the catch point. That's who Charvarius Ward is. That's who Demo is. Difficult at the catch point. Uh, he's got one interception. That's bad, but 16 pass breakups. I'm telling you, this is freaking Charvarius Ward with upside. Now, is he going to be that good? Yeah, come on, man. Charvarius Ward's freaking awesome. He, he's an undrafted free agent. Um, footwork is a nine. I thought he I, did. I put this. Yeah, yeah, right. I thought I had this on here. He had some amazing footwork. And I thought I was like, man, these are some of the best feet in the draft. Um, I got he's he's a fun player. Where did I put him? Dude, I don't think it saved my notes from last night. Dang it. Yeah, I don't think it did. My notes are uh, this is a problem with Google Docs, right? Like stuff just pops around. Yeah, I, I mean, I've got him in the third round, nickel corner. I got a lot of third round nickels, man. Whew, I got four. Third round nickel backs that I like. And Renardo Green's one of them. He is a fun, fun player. Um, excited about him. Oh, right here. Dad, what's up, brother? He says Morgan is now number 49 on Jeremiah's board. He's talking about Jordan Morgan, the offensive tackle out of Arizona. I'm pretty low on him. Um, let me see exactly where he is on my big board. I've got him 35. Um, so man, yeah, he's lower on him than I am. Frazier's at 33. I got Frazier at 25. Um, so, yeah, there's some similarities there. And Morgan's a good player. It's just very low ceiling. Very low ceiling. And he's not going to be every team's cup of tea. Oh, Nick, right here. DJ Jones in the sixth round was an all-time pick. You know what's funny? People forget DJ Jones was not good for two years. He was not good. Like, back into the roster guy. Couldn't figure it out. Couldn't anchor. Just couldn't figure it out. Third year, whoa. Fourth year, unbelievable. Fifth year, goes and gets paid elsewhere. And not doing too great. But it was weird because, and that's what you want on these day three picks. Like, whoop. You know what I'm saying? Just like, whoop. Like, you'll get there. You'll get there. Uh, real quick, I, I want to take time. You know, the, the 49ers rush.com is huge. And, you know, our draft book and all that stuff goes out to every single member, the 49ers rush.com um, or our Patreon channel. And if you sign up right now, um, we got a free trial. You get it for free. Any tier, any level membership, free trial, boom, Saturday. We're going to send that out to you guys and you can do whatever you want for it. Now, uh, one of the things I haven't talked about a lot is PB Systems. They're the ones that help me build the 49ers rush.com and the owner. Guess what? Diehard Diners fan. The quickest way to get search engines like Google to put your business at the top of search results is by having a steady flow of positive reviews. With PowerBrand Systems, you can show up in search and stand apart from your local competition by easily collecting new customer reviews through text message. But getting found is only the beginning. Most consumers choose the first business that responds to them. Unless you start conversations with potential customers almost instantly, they'll go somewhere else. 
That's why Power Brand Systems make starting conversations with website visitors as easy as clicking a button. And the video, uh, like, just go check it out. The link is in the description of this video podcast. Trust me, they're not paying me for this. I just really appreciate what they did for me and my business and my family and helped create exactly what we needed as PB Systems. So if you need any type of website design, they do so much more than that. It is incredible. Um, go check it out. Go check it out. So that that's there. Uh, right here. I don't know about Kalia Davis yet. I don't know either. I really don't know either. Um, he's got some bad tape. Yeah, we've only seen him for like three games, but his last game was bad, bad, bad. Uh, him and Drake Jackson, I don't know. We'll see. But if we're going to talk to DJ Jones, give him some time. Two years. It's been two years for Kalia Davis. It's been two years for Drake Jackson. Any dividends from either one of those two? Absolutely bonus. Mike C, look at this. Sweet little prompt for Power Brand. There we go. Yeah, we, we, we were we working. Uh, we, we family, man. We rise together and you help me out. That goes a long way. I, I'm not, a, I, hopefully I'm not a person that forgets Mike, you know, you, you've helped me considerably as well. And I'm very thankful for you. So, uh, this was fun. An hour, 15 minutes talking defensive line. Woo. I'm ready to go, baby. Uh, remember I'm going to be on at 5 PM tonight on, uh, striking gold with Rob louder. He's awesome. Go check that out. That's going to be a fun conversation and lots more shows coming this week. Going to be doing a fantasy show, um, with basement brews, fantasy football on Friday. And outside of that, just work it nonstop on this book. So once I get it done, I'm going to share it with you guys and y'all have fun with it. Uh, but until next time, really appreciate y'all fun show. Thank you guys so much for allowing me to do this. Uh, until next time, stay strong, faithful.